Welcome back to the Tracy Trendy Show, my lovelies. It's another day, it's another dollar, and it's another low down dirt of life after lock up. My loves, first on the docket, let's get started on Troy and Zaria, aka Zorilla. All right, my loves. Now, Troy's pissed off that he won't be able to see his daughter due to Zorilla's shenanigans. And she claims that it all started because he was texting other women, even though she never once saw what was on that phone. And he calls her out on this. And, you know, she apologizes. I think this is the first tip of sabotage. So he's all, okay, let's move forward, community events. So he goes out and do the community event so they can get paid, you know, get their little 50 kids so they can go scam the government. But Troy still feels deflated. And um, because he knows he has to call um, his mother of his child about what happened. And he doesn't want any more drama. And he looks at Zorilla at that when he says those words. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Flash forward. Community Day was a success. And they got their 50 kids signed up for this nonprofit. But Troy is still pissed that he didn't get to see his daughter that day. And now he's going to face Yana. That's the mother of his child at this next visit. Now, Zorilla keeps saying that she's taking full responsibility. And, but you know, that doesn't fix anything. So in the meantime, Zorilla knows what she's doing. She's playing checkers, not chess, you guys, believe it or not. Some of you guys were saying X, Y, and Z. I'm like, Zorilla knows what she's doing. She does not have to speak to this, this baby mother. She does it because she don't want to. She doesn't have to say any words. Just her mere presence is going to pop things off. That's all. Her mere presence. So anyway, it, you know, I would say like, if you couldn't stand someone, maybe your boss or somebody in, in the room with you, it puts your nerves, you know, amps up your nerves. So this is what um, Zarilla is doing. She's just be, merely being around, just slithering like the snake she is. So anyway, Yana appears at the park, but without baby Troy. And she doesn't want to talk with Zarilla, but Zarilla hangs around. She doesn't utter a word. So she's coming across very meek and mild and all, oh, you know, not so aggressive because she's not really talking. And anyway, she says, I don't want, Yana's saying she doesn't want to have a talk with Troy uh, because she didn't have a baby with Zarilla. And she calls her a two-time bird. Mm-hmm, two-time bird because she this is she's on her second jailbird. All right? So... Flash forward, you know, Troy says, where's my daughter? He goes looking to the, moving towards the car of Yana's car. He says, I want to see my daughter. She says, uh, Yana comes to uh, mm -mm -mm. Zarilla, tells Zarilla to control her husband because Zarilla just turns her back. Zarilla's job is done. She has caused chaos between the mother of her husband's child and her husband. Mission completed. She has nothing to do more. So that's why she turns her back and said, mm, not going to happen. Not going to happen. We got to give Zarilla credit. There are some skills people know. They may not be the brightest, but they know a trick or two. And Zarilla has finessed this trick, I must say. Now, moving on to Kim and Joey. All right. This is eight hours later after a dirty test. Kim hasn't talked to Joey. She doesn't even know if he's going to tell her the truth if she does. So finally, she corners him in the kitchen and he denies and denies. I mean, yeah, come on now. She's providing three hots in a cot and money in a car. So he says that he has another cup. And I mean, another test. So he pees in the cup. Now, miraculously, he passed the test. Now, I'm like, okay, Kim, you've been around enough druggies. You said you was with one and you're not going to be with another. And I'm thinking, don't you know they're up to things? Now, there's millions of possibilities of how he could have passed. But Joey is not clean for sure. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Now, 
the cocoa powder could be in your system two to four days, two to four days. And he was strung out for a couple of days because she said he was acting differently. Then he took, takes off. Then he comes back when he thinks he's clean. Then he brings out the test. Now the cocoa powder is out of his system. Or could have could he have borrowed some pee? Now the cons get tricky, loves. And I wouldn't have put it past zoned out Joey for doing something like that. And you say, oh, well, she was looking at him while he was peeing. His back was turned a little to the side. And he could have been squirting some pee. He got some pee somewhere or the system, you know, the cocoa is out of his system. Because these cons know all about the tricks. Their mind can work overtime, but they do not want to get out there and get a job and do what they could do. Okay. So then um, flash forward, Kim is out here sobbing because Jew is going to miss everyone's birthday because guess what? The PO swung by and drug tested him. And he tested 30. Uno, dos, tres. Three times for THC. That's not the cocoa powder, but you know what? I think he said, I need a little something, something, because uh, I don't want to test for the cocoa powder if Kim brings it up. So anyway, he switched up to the THC. That's the little greenery. And now he has to do a 90-day rehab. Or else go to the pokey. By this time, Kim is moving into her new house, feeling like a single mother. And I'm like, news flash, Kim. News flash. Just because you moved a man in your house doesn't change the fact that you're still a single mother. You are a bird who's paying everything for this man. Don't, do not, do not get it twisted. And, you know, anybody, you know, at the end of the day, you're still footing the bills and you need your daddy to co-sign on the new house. Not Joey. Joey's name's not anywhere. He's not got a footprint on that house because he does not have a dime on him other than the diamonds you've been putting in his pocket. Lying up his pocket probably with those children's child support. Anyway, and she wants everyone to believe that Joey's in rehab because he wants to be, even though it was a court order or he goes back to the pokey. Now, on top of that, they leave a little cliffhanger about the DNA test. I don't know who this child is. She better hope it's her husband's child. She needs that $2,500 a month. Otherwise, she's going to wind up paying a big bill. So she better hope it's her husband's child. So moving on to Melissa and Joey. Mel's friend is on here to get the ring appraised, okay? So, because they were talking all smack, so Melissa like, oh, I don't know, I don't know. Let's, so they said, let's get the ring, make sure it's real. And then Melissa says she can't shake the feeling on how John, if it is real, how did he buy such a fabulous ring? So she gets it appraised. The clarity is brilliant. You know, this, you know, and it's a natural diamond, not lab created. Now it's all about how he got the money since he was in the pokey for armed robbery. Until they find out that the ring doesn't have an etching, that's all that little friend of Melissa needs. She latches on. Oh, maybe he knew he got it from some back alley. And then they think the ring is illegal. And, and Joey when, flips out when Melissa tells him this. He says, I work my ass off. I got three jobs. Bitch, I know how to save. Okay? <laughs> I use all my savings on this damn ring. So good for Joey. I love a saver, but I don't love a big spender. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Unless they have a lot of more coins in the bank. Moving on to Justine and Mike. Now, Justine is all blubbering because she didn't give her uterus time to heal after baby number four. And now she's in tears about this baby number five. I mean, you had two babies. You, you're giving, you had you know, two pregnancies in the womb within a year. Two pregnant. Well, your head around that. You didn't have one baby and then shoot another baby in there and they got to go out. Child. And they go to bump the birth. The, the doctor says you got to bump up this birth. Okay? Because your uterus is tripping out. You did not give it a break. So technically, they'll have two babies under the age of one. And fortunately, she's getting her tubes removed, not tied or burned, removed. Now, Mike urges Justine to call her mother since they are moving up the surgery. She does, but she plays coy. Oh, mom, come up here. It's an emergency. I'm like, sure, mom asked, what the emergency? And I'm sure her mom has heard this little line many times before. And she's not about to drop everything and fly out 
flat out tonight. You know what the ticket is? Justine has no idea of some drop everything and fly out tonight plane ticket. Well, she knows her mama's all about the what you say. Okay, so you're not trying to read between, between the lines and decoding your message. You better say what you mean. And Justine thinks her mom is being too hard on her for perhaps because she has too many rabbits in the hats. Mm -hmm. She doesn't know what type of foolery is her daughter up to, and she doesn't want to be stressed out due to their rash decision. And I totally understand. Moving on to Teeny and Rod. All right. Giving up on his mom is not an option. And we all knew that. And we all knew Tini was making a bad move by laying her hands on that. And that's why Rob can't really believe that she would do that because then that's going to change their relationship. But anyway, Rob's mom accepts his invitation. The kids are still in the house and he tells kids, okay, don't let your mom know, but I'm inviting Kate, my mom, over to the house. All right, all good and dandy, but you know what, Rob? You know you got those cameras in the house, all right? Now, Tini's watching on her first day of the job. Now, I think that's kind of produced, but anyway, all right, let's just roll with that, my loves. Now, Rob's brother comes as a mediator, but I guess he just won his $500 screen time because he didn't do any mediating because, um, anyway, it's been a minute since the mother and the son conversed. Meanwhile, Tini is mad. She's looking at this meeting at her house without her permission. And Kate wants to vindicate her name. And Rod wants to know what happened. Why two women are fighting? And Kate said that Teeny touched her first by grabbing her mouth and Kate goes off. When Rob said there is no way hell his good wife would lay hands. And we know the disrespect. The disrespect was going to come out. Now, Kate flew off the handle. She does have a hair trigger. She is correct. But I wish she would have kindly just um, collected her things and got the stepping. Because I would say, you know what? Roll the tapes. You know, you're going you're gonna to be kissing my hand. Mm -mm -mm. Kissing the ring when you see that this bitch done smushed my face. And I would have kindly walked away. Now, I have a big old... Uh, fit up in there. Moving on to Bianca and Daniel. Loves, it's official, it's confirmed that Bianca and Daniel always fights and have unprotected and unsatisfying sex. But Bianca is okay if she gets pregnant. That's what she tells our friend, uh, her friend Haley. Now she figures it, it out as long as it's come, you know, this is okay now. If it comes with that magic ring, because that's going to complete the fairy tale and make everything better. Okay. I'm like, how old is this girl? 23. Did this chick forget that this dude wouldn't get up to pour her a cup of coffee? I mean, what makes her think that he's going to drop on one knee to propose? I mean, for real. Get serious. She's not connecting the dots. That, that accident really did her bad. I'm just saying. Now, her friend doesn't have faith, that's Haley, doesn't have faith that Bianca is living in the real world, and I have to co-sign to that. She feels that Bianca is 10 toes deep and refused to abort the mission if she's proven wrong, because I think Bianca says, shit, I done went on cross-country, paid for this man's books, mm -mm -mm, and everything, and I ain't trying to be proven wrong. So, Kaylee does have a conversation with Daniel, heart to heart, and she feels that He's just dragging Bianca alone and he needs to cut the cord if he's not fully committed. And he's not fully committed. My loves, I did a video. He's already cheated. He's only went with um, Bianca for the sex, the three hots and the cot. That's it. He doesn't really have to follow the rules that it's because he does have options, but those options is not as good as sex and three hots and the cot. And so Bianca did catch him cheating and official date, here's some tea, here's the latest update is that um, she has moved out and she has broken up with Daniel. So, okay, finally she has wised up. Now, my loves, at this time of the show, we talk about the winners, we talk about the losers. First, on the docket, the docket is Troy and Zaria. Mm. Who's going to get that fail? Who's going to be the loser? It's going to be Troy because he's going to lose out 
on precious time with his precious daughter, easily, if he keeps fooling around with Cirilla. All right, so now we are 109 cons. Now, Kim and Joey. We all know Joey's always going to pull in the point for the cons. So, you know, because he's all up to foolery. So we are now at 1-1. One, one. We are at a tie. Melissa and Joey. I say Melissa's taking the L. Joey's standing up for himself, and she's going to miss out on a good man if she starts, keeps up with this foolery. Even if it's for the show, whatever it's for, don't be doing all this mess. So I'm going to give the L to Melissa. We are 2-1 cons. Justine and Mike. Justine, you a loser. You a loser. You're just killing your body up and not slowing down and making all this rash decision. Mike is just a big rash decision. He does, it's not really affecting his body. So I'm going to give the point to, I mean, the L to Justine. So we're at 3-1 non-cons. Teeny and Rob, this is this is kind of interesting because Rob didn't, I, 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 I almost want to say it's a draw. Teeny gets mad because he, he brought his mom to the house and Rob's plan blew up in his face. So it's kind of like a big old fail for both of them. So I'm not considering this at all. Moving on to Bianca and Daniel. Give the, the failure to Bianca. Okay? Bianca, even though she's in the, even though she's in this like fairy tale life, I don't care. She's taking the L because uh, she needs to wake up. And she finally does to find out he's cheating and then she moves on by her business. Mm. For one, cons. And that is the end of the Tracy Trendy show, my lovelies. What do you think of that? What, what, what do you think of that? Drop a line, like the video, subscribe, always hit that notification button, my loves. And I'll always check you out on the flip side.